Hi everyone and welcome back to Sonia's Prep. This week's video is going to be a week of meals. You guys really seem to enjoy the last time I did it, so I'm going to take you along on this particular week. Um, actually, I'm off for this entire week, so you may see some adventurous recipes this week. I am trying to make something brand new. It's a lentil rice dish with chicken and golden raisins. It's it's a, it looks a little tedious, but because I'm home, I want it to be a little more adventurous. Usually I go to like the go-to things for my house, but there are those days where you just want something a little extra, something a little bit more interesting, and today is one of those days. So come along and I'll take you along and show you what I'll be cooking every single day this week, and I hope you guys enjoy. Now let's get prepping. <laughs> First on the menu this week is this mujadra dish, which is a rice and lentil dish with crispy potatoes and chicken. So first things first, the recipe asks for half a cup of lentils to be soaked for two hours. You know we don't have two hours to soak anything. So I'm going to be taking this out, measuring half a cup, and then just soaking it in boiling water. So hopefully that'll speed it up a little bit. So a half a cup of regular lentils is going in to the bowl. And because I'm gonna be soaking it, it's kind of like washing it, so I'm not necessarily gonna pre-wash this. Oh, and I don't have boiling water, that's fun. Well, let's boil some. So I'm just gonna put a pot of water to boil and I'll add that to the lentils and let that soak while I do all the other components. The water has boiled, so I'm gonna be adding this boiling water into the lentils, no, part, no specific amount, just to fill it up and let it just soak for the next few minutes until we do all of our other things. Separately now, I have another pot of water boiling where I'm going to boil my basmati rice, one and a half cups of basmati rice that I'm going to be washing right now. So I should have salted the water before I added in the rice, but it's fine. Um, I added in the rice and once it starts boiling, I'll set a timer for seven minutes and then I will strain the entire thing. When cooking, I do my very best to include the children in some small task so that they can feel like they are a part of the cooking process and that they have something to do as well. Over here I have some skinless drumsticks that I've just washed. I'm going to season them with about half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of turmeric, salt and black pepper and I'm going to saute it on a skillet. At this point, I see the rice has started to bubble. I'm gonna put the timer on for seven minutes. And then I'm gonna drain it and put some cold water on it to shock it. Okay, so as you just saw, the rice is fully ready. We've drained it. Now I'm gonna cook my lentils that I've been soaking for about 10 minutes in boiling water. I have a pot of water here on the stove. A no specific measurements, just enough to cook these, maybe um, double or triple the amount of lentils that you have here. I'm gonna salt the water, place it inside, and as soon as the water starts boiling, I'll place the timer for 10 minutes, shut it off, rinse out the lentils, and drain them. So I've never, and I think this is called medrudera rice. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. I don't know if my technique is correct, but at least I'm trying something new. 
I always want to try at least something new every once in a while just because things get you know redundant and repetitive and boring so um, here's to trying something new so I'm sure whoever has made this properly has uh, lots of tips and tricks so leave them in the comments down below to help everyone else out for this recipe you also need to saute two onions so I'm going to be doing that now I'm going to be peeling them and chopping them up and getting that going on a skillet. No, 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 I'm not feeling anything. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. We're making it at a drop. Rice. Rice with chicken and lentils. We have a few things going on at the same time. We have the chicken cooking away, just covered the lid for like about five to 10 minutes. We have the lentils that have just started to boil slightly, so I'm gonna set the timer for 10 minutes for it to cook. We have the onions like supposed to be caramelizing, and we're gonna add raisins to this. So it is, as you can see, there's a lot of components, but it just looks so good. I really wanted to try it, and at least I tried it and got it out of the way. So as you can tell, I like to try new things and um, be a little adventurous when I have the time. When I'm typically working, there's no way that I'll be fiddling around with millions of pots. Um, but I wanted to try this for a very, very long time. And let's see how it comes out. I added in just a touch of salt to the to the onions and now the lentils are fully cooked so I'm going to be draining and straining that right now. So we're supposed to make crispy onions. This is the best that I can do without like burning them. <laughs> After that, it says to Put in some turmeric powder and then some golden raisins, which Michelle wants to drop in. Go ahead, drop it in carefully. Yay. And I'm gonna give it a good mix. And then you burn them. I know, it looks like I burned it, but it's, I don't know, not really. It's supposed to be crispy onions. But if it's supposed to be crispy onions, put in the toaster so it's gonna be crispy. We should put onions in the in the toaster? Yeah. So it could be crispy? Yeah. Mm, I don't know about that. Ew. <laughs> okay, I think this is all ready. I'm gonna shut off the fire and put this to the side. I just peeled a couple of potatoes and I'm gonna slice them and you'll see what we're gonna do with them next. Okay, so now it's time to put the entire thing together. I'm gonna take the chicken out of this pot because this is where I'm going to be assembling the entire dish. The chicken is basically fully cooked. The children are screaming. What's going on? I'm gonna add in a few tablespoons of oil, some turmeric. I'm gonna put salt all throughout the bottom. I'm gonna mix. Then I'm gonna add layer on the potatoes. Mix the rice with the lentils together. And I'm gonna layer about half of that on top of the chicken.
On top of that, I'm gonna add in half of the onion and raisin mixture. Oh, this looks so good. Okay, mm -hmm. And now the rest of the rice. So this looks incredible already. I'm gonna cover it with the lid for five minutes. And once those five minutes are up, I'm gonna put it on a lowest flame for about 45 minutes and then it's gonna be completely ready to eat. So it's time to take this out. It looks just absolutely heavenly. I had to find like the hugest plate for this. My fear is always that when I do this, I'm gonna just throw everything on top of myself. Pray for me, guys. Okay, ready, set, go. Okay, ready? All right. Oh, wow. I'm very proud of myself. Nice and crispy. Amazingly looking. Let me get a spoon so we can cut into this. Okay, here is a close up of it. Wow, look. Guys, are you proud of me? Let me know in the comments down below how proud you are. <laughs> wow, this looks heavenly. Okay, we're gonna go and dig in now. I just took a quick bite, of course, of the crispy potatoes. Oh my gosh, heavenly. Hi everyone, we're back in the kitchen. It's Tuesday today and I wanted to make something that sounds very fancy, but I promise you it's not. It's homemade dumplings, but I'm gonna cheat this time. I'm gonna use egg roll wrappers. I'll show you just how easy it is. But this is my husband's all-time favorite dinner and I want to surprise him maybe next week when I have a little bit more free time and I'm going to make the dough from scratch. So if you want to see how I make my homemade Bukharian dumplings, which are called pinimeni, and how I make my Bukharian traditional manti, let me know. Leave me a comment down below if you want to see that. I think it's going to be a fun video. Um, I've never made it before for 16 years. I've been married. I've never made it and that's his favorite, favorite dish. So I want to surprise him, make it by my from, from start to finish and I think it's gonna be great but today we're gonna to do this very very quickly with these egg roll wrappers and with ground meat so come along and let me show you how I do so it. to serve the dumplings I'm going to be making like a tomato based soup with um, an onion garlic carrots and celery so I'm gonna do that first so that the soup can be cooking while I'm making the actual dumplings also I, I want to add meat to the soup but I don't want to let my steaks go to waste. I have very, very good steaks that we just grilled two days ago. So instead of me taking out new meat, um, I'm just gonna be using these, repurposing them. Because they have bones, it's gonna become very, very good. But if you're making this at home, definitely put in, uh, you could either make this vegetarian, even though the dumplings are gonna have meat, or you can use any type of meat that, uh, or bones that you have in your home. So let's do this. I'm gonna clean up my veggies, dice them up really small, and let's do this. guys know if your celery is still good to use I don't know if it's coming up on camera but it looks a little bit pale is there some sort of way to tell if it's still good or not I mean it still feels a little bit um, crunchy but I think for soups it's fine right let me know in the comments down below what are your guys' thoughts so I'm gonna be just cubing up all of these veggies and then dropping it into the soup pot with a little bit of oil sauteing that as our base and then adding in tons of tomato sauce with water and tons of garlic of course. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm gonna be using a Dutch oven. Uh, you can use any kind of soup pan. I'm gonna add in about two tablespoons of oil. Feel free to use whichever oil you like. Once that gets heated up, I'm gonna be adding in all of the veggies and browning them. A few minutes have basically passed of me sauteing and I'm going to add in my steak meat that I had left over that I didn't want to go to waste and some of their bowls is just going to add tons of flavor. So I have about, I don't know how much, half a pound of meat, one pound of meat. I didn't never know how to do the weights. I have one onion that I'm going to be food processing. So I'm gonna cut it into eighths. Adding it in here. And process. Let me make sure that it's completely and fully processed. So stop it and um, get to scrape down the sides of the bowl so that all of the pieces will be completely pureed. Okay, that's perfect. I'm gonna add all these onions into the meat mixture and add in these spices. Salt, black pepper, cumin, and coriander. You can add in as much or as little as you like. I'm gonna add in about half a teaspoon of each of these or maybe a little bit less. I don't really measure these, this part. Okay, so the base of the soup is looking good. I'm gonna add in my tomato sauce now. So remember, for each can of tomato sauce that you add, you're going to add in about a minimum of two cups of water to dilute it all. So I added in a total of three cups of water to 15 ounces of tomato sauce. I love adding bay leaves to this, or to any soups actually. Let that come to a boil, and let that cook simmering for about 45 minutes. This is what the meat filling looks like. It's all mixed together. And the soup is now boiling. I'm gonna lower the flame and then cover it with the lid and let that simmer away while we're getting the dumplings ready. So this is the setup, okay? You need to have some sort of plate or cutting board with the egg roll wrappers a bunch of really soaking wet paper towels and you're filling. So this is what I do. Take a wet paper towel, place it down. Make your edges now, how you're gonna cut it. So each egg roll sheet, you're gonna cut into nine. For an easier way to do this, you can also take this out. While it's drying, measure out
Now this is the final, final layer. I'm gonna be covering up this final layer, pressing down so that everything gets really nice and soaked. And then I'm gonna flip everything over. Ready, set, go. So I'm gonna be working on this layer that we actually did first. So remove this spread out the dough as much as you can. Now place a little bit of filling into each space. Okay, and now it's time to fold. Very simple. You take it and you literally fold it in half. You push the meat in with your index finger and then you fold like that. Okay. So now you have this kind of envelope, do that with all of them, and then I'll show you what we're gonna do next. Okay, now all of them are like this. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna have this kind of, you're gonna, your index finger is gonna be right on top and behind. Your middle fingers are gonna be cushioning it from the bottom. You're gonna keep your middle finger inside and fold these together. And these are your little pilmeni. So once they're ready, I'm gonna be transferring them over to my board over here lined with parchment paper. So let's do this again. Have your thumbs index finger and middle finger. You pick up the flap with your index fingers, keep your middle finger in the center, bring these two corners together and smush. And there you have the little mini. Let's do this again. You have your thumbs on top, index finger on the top, middle fingers on the bottom. Lift up the, the flaps with your index finger and bring these two corners together and press. <laughs> Look who walked in. Look who's home. <laughs> girls are in the kitchen now. I remember doing this with my mom when I was a little girl. So the easiest part for them to do for their age is to fold them in half because there's uh, some technique involved in folding them in that um, specific pirimeni shape. So you guys can start, Miriam, you can fold these in half and Aviva, you can fold these in half. Okay, go ahead, fold it. Good job. Mama, Keep folding. How about Keep folding I fold again. it and, and then you do the rest? Right? Here they are all ready to go. So these are the ones that my girls tried to make. And I'm going to be boiling them now for a few minutes and then dropping them into the soup. So I have my water boiling over here. I'm going to be dropping the pilmeni in very soon. The soup is smells amazing and it looks perfect traditionally though the soup is made with sour cherries and chickpeas but my kids are not such great fans of it so i left it out this time don't forget to let me know in the comments down below if you want me to do a whole like traditional video of how i make my dumplings and my manti and pinameni um so i'll definitely do that for you if you guys are interested i'll record it so yeah, I can't wait to put this all together and I'll show you what it all looks like. Okay, now the water has boiled and I'm gonna drop them in. Don't overcrowd the pan because you don't want them to get all mushy. 
Or you could also put it on a, what is this thing called? Not calendar, what is this called? Here, you, know, you could drop them in and shake it around. Drop it in and shake it, shake it, shake it until it comes off. Good job. Um, again. Each again, okay. Again. Careful. Mm, hot. Okay, let's drop it in. Um, and shake, 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 shake. Good job. Oh, again, again, again. I think we can actually fit all of them. Yeah. So just like you would with any other pasta, as soon as you drop them in the water, you do want to mix it a little bit so that they don't stick to the bottom or stick to one another. And I would say for this size pirmeni, I think five minutes is enough. So I'm going to put a timer on for five minutes. Okay, so five minutes are up. They're all on top. So I'm gonna be, what, I don't know. Guys, what is this called? Pimeni. Let me know in the comments below, please. I don't know what it's called. Um, so I'm gonna put, a, I don't know, however many I think that my kids would enjoy into oh. each um, soup bowl. And then I will be putting the soup over the top. the soup I put in some scallions my kids will not like the scallions I'm putting it for my husband and that's it we're ready to enjoy you have every intention of following through with something and then life happens well this was me with recording all of my dinner so this is I think a week or a week and a half into the future so I obviously skipped a few days so we're gonna pick right back up where I left off I'm not even sure which day I left off on I think it was probably a Wednesday so um, we had a barbecue the night before and I had um, a lot of kids are obviously home We had a lot of meat and steaks left over, which I put into a... Switching now to doing this as a voiceover because let's face it, kids will be kids and it's just easier for you to hear me this way. We are ready into a skillet. I had about, I don't know, a tablespoon of avocado oil. Any oil is going to be fine. One onion finely diced, about three garlic cloves, about a tablespoon or two of tomato paste. I keep mine frozen so I can easily break off any piece that I would want. And the meat that you have ground up that you don't want to throw out. Um, these are the spices that I will be using, salt, pepper, paprika, cumin, and coriander. So let's do this. In a skillet, I added in about two tablespoons of oil and added in my um, onions and garlic, as you'll see, and I'm gonna be mixing that around. And then I add in my tomato paste and mixing that around as well, followed by the meat. If you don't have any meat ready like I did, you can simply brown some meat that's ground up. It's much better with lamb if you have that. It just comes out, you know, incredible. This is the setup. I have my meat mixture here with a little bit of water. I have my spring roll wrapper here and then a board over here to line all of them up when I'm done. From my experience of eating Moroccan cigars, they're usually made with filo dough, which is oh, so good. That's going to be next on my list to do. But I'm using spring roll wrappers because what? that's what I had in the house and they just came out amazing. To fully seal in and close up the Moroccan cigars, I use some water at the very end of it and that just seals everything in. So this is what it looks like when they're all rolled up. I made the regular standard size and then I divided it in half and made these mini ones. These are actually a perfect uh, lunch for kids to take to school with them. 
I think it's perfect at least. I think they will thoroughly enjoy them. So I lined up my station. I have a board here with some parchment paper and I have a pot here with some oil that I'm gonna be frying it up into. So these came out absolutely incredible. We ended up having these with some leftover pastas from the other night, as well as a very large salad. So I have this plant-based shawarma in my freezer for a while now. I want to use it up. So I'm going to make these, um, I don't know what they're called, um, burritos, or like breakfast burritos with it's cheese burrito. in the oven. The enchiladas, I took some wraps that I had in the house and just browned them on each side using a little bit of oil. They're gonna come out nice and crispy and start to bubble up, which is perfect. To that, I'm gonna add in this plant-based shawarma. I'm gonna let that heat through and defrost. Uh, separately, I'm making a whole bunch of seasonings into a bowl, which I'm going to be adding to the flour that I put into a pan with some oil. So once the flour is in the pan, I mix it all up add in all of the seasonings and I'm gonna have the full video recipe of uh, what I found on YouTube someone was making it and I'm just gonna attach it here for you guys in the description box so you could follow along and get all of the detailed ingredients and instructions to that I'm gonna be adding in some veggie broth and making a little slurry which is going to go over the enchiladas As the base, I'm placing in a little bit of enchilada sauce and heavy cream. I love these sandwiches. Even though I never tried it, I love it. To the wraps, I'm then adding in the plant-based shawarma with a lot of cheese on the top of it and rolling that up and placing it into the pan. Place the rest of the enchilada sauce over the top and tons of cheese as well and baking it in the oven covered at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes until it's bubbly. Now moving on to this creamy baked potato. Oh my gosh, this is such comfort food. It's absolutely delicious and it's a perfect way of using up um, pre-baked or boiled potatoes that you have around the house. So I slice them up once they're already cooked and separately I'm going to be making an alfredo sauce. So into a pot I have about two tablespoons of butter mixed with two tablespoons of oil, um, tons of garlic and salt and black pepper with onion soup mix, about half a cup of Parmesan cheese. Mix all of that up with heavy cream and just pour that all over on top of the potatoes with a lot of cheese as well. I cover it with the lid and place it into the oven, also at 350 degrees until it's all nice and bubbly. Oh, look how gorgeous that looks. And this was absolute comfort food and so incredibly delicious. One, two, three. Guys, food is ready. Oh, it is thinking. Uh, 
that's it thank you all guys for watching and coming along with me on this video i had so much fun creating this video i left a lot of bloopers inside let me know if you liked this sort of i guess the way that i edited this video this time i just wanted to include a lot more real life moments for you guys because let's face it that's how real life is it's busy it's hectic kids are in the background so i hope you guys all enjoyed let me know in the comments down below happy prepping and have a wonderful week ahead from our family to yours.